You know how many times I wanted to just give up? How many times I've thought about ending it? Life is hard. Easy, it's not an option. But it's worth fighting. It's worth believing. It's worth giving yourself a chance. It's worth mustering yourself up, standing up inside yourself. It's worth fighting relentlessly, never giving up. It's worth fighting a good fight. It's worth being around motivated, positive people. It's worth being up-tempo. It's easy to have faith and feel good when you're feeling good and you have no pain and your bills are paid and you got a clean bill of health from the doctor. It's easy to be motivated then. But when that's not the situation, it's hard. When you look in the mirror, you don't see the person that you once saw. It's hard. I know it's hard, but do it hard. It's necessary that you take charge that you begin to stand up inside of yourself, that you dry your tears and you're not given the luxury of feeling sorry for yourself, that you got to get in a fighting mode. You can't surrender. You can't be a chump. You got to fight back. You got to stand up and start. So wait a minute, what is it I need to do? You got to make yourself move even if it hurts. Many people have been written off and said, this one won't survive. And they did. It's possible. You've got to believe in your heart of hearts that it's possible that you can beat this. Your belief, your faith, your drive, your determination, your persistence, your perseverance, your spirit, greater is he that is in you than what's out here in this world. So you've got to decide, you've got to say, it's possible that I can beat this. And it's necessary that I do this. In spite of the pain and the conditions, you've got to mobilize your mind and your spirit. There's nothing as powerful as a made up mind. I'm not through yet. I've got to work. I have an assignment that's incomplete. I'm not through yet. I'm not going out like this. I'm going to fight. And when you do, when you give it the best that you can, when you keep on trying, you're seeking, you're asking, you're knocking, something happens. The universe opens up for you. If the peak is worth reaching, the climb is gonna be hard. I know, I know, I know you're ready to give up. I know, I feel you, you're ready to give in. You're like, I've never gone through this before. Or maybe you're at the darkest point of your life and you're ready to give up. You're at a point in your life where you feel like it's do or die. You're going through so much pain. You're going through so much agony. You're ready to give up. You're ready to quit. Listen to me very carefully. You are a warrior. It is time for you to fight. Look, that test might not go away. That pain may not go away. That fight might not go away. You are a warrior. It's time for you not to back up, not to give up, not to give in. Stop letting stuff derail you. Stop getting stuck. Every time life don't go your way, stop getting stuck. Stop quitting. Stop giving up. Keep fighting in the midst of the struggle. Keep fighting. Keep thinking positive. Keep going. You only lose when you quit. Remember what makes you different from the weak. The difference between the weak and the strong is that when the strong have no more left, they fight, they fight, they fight. The weak, they quit, they give up, they give in, and there's nothing weak about you. I'm a fucking fight. When I'm laying in a hospital bed with tubes and needles sticking out of my ass, will I continue to fight? Yes! When I'm laying dead on this motherfucking floor, will I continue to fight? Yes. Why do you do it? I can't help my fucking self. I'm a fighter. And that's what fighters do. If you want to live your best life, your absolutely best life, you gotta do me a huge favor. You gotta watch them choices you make. People make bad choices. They wake up and they make another bad choice. And they make another bad choice. Now they got a habit of bad choices, right? And they like, how do I get here? Choices. How do I get here? You trying to get to certain places, but you ain't making the choices that's gonna get you there. You all in your feelings. The problem is that most people, they like, they can't get up in the morning. They ain't got no energy. 
They don't got the energy to keep up with me. I'm like, boo, ain't nothing wrong with you. You just ain't got the stamina. You just ain't got the energy. You can't smart everything. You can't outthink everything. Some stuff is just you got to be powerful. It's just some stuff that you got to have stamina for. You just too slow. It just take you too long. You wake up, take you three weeks to do what it can take 24 hours to do. It don't make you a bad person, but you're going to forever be average because to be great, you got to keep up. No alarm clock needed. My passion wakes me up. My drive wakes me up. My determination wakes me up. My ability to be, do, and have whatever I want, it wakes me up. What wakes you up? What drives you? Why are you playing this game? You got to begin with the end in mind. So whatever your dream or your goal is, you got to wake up every day to it. You got to go to bed with it. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? You got to read stuff. The music you listen to, everything you do, got to pour into that dream. Don't give up on yourself. Don't throw the towel in so quickly. Many people give up on the one yard line. You know the human spirit is powerful. There's nothing as powerful. It's hard to kill the human spirit. There's greatness in you. And you've got to learn how to tune out the critics outside and the critic inside. And since I'm going to do this, I'm going to harness my will. And I'm not going to let anything stop me. I deserve this. Working on yourself, talking to yourself. That's so very important. Overcoming the negative conversation, that inner dialogue is going on all the time. You've got to stand up inside yourself sometimes and say, shut up. I'm in control here. You've got to have an uplifted expression. Watch your body posture. All of these things affect you psychically. Start working and developing yourself now and prepare yourself for what it is that you want because you expect to get it. All I need you to do is speak up and say, I expect to win. Declare that it's over. That yesterday was the last day that you were a loser. Like yesterday was the last day you expected to come up short. When you set out for a goal, expect it to happen. Expect to be successful. Expect it to be positive. If you can expect it, if you can wake up feeling like a winner, if you can wake up talking like a winner, if you can expect that everything you do will come out winning, I guarantee you, you never ever have to come up short again. It might be year two, three, four before you get your big win, but you can decide now, I'm gonna walk, talk, and be a different person. You decide that. You're the lead character in the story of your life. Everything has to do with you intended to win. Too many of you are playing with your business. If you make that shift, I'm going to win. We're going to play to win now. We're not playing to play. We're not playing to see how we do. We're not playing for fun. Once you start getting some winning, you start changing. You talk different. You walk different. All of a sudden, this isn't the same damn human being. You can change you. You'd be surprised what a little winning would do. You'd be surprised how good you'd be if you just decide to win. Be number one in your office, number one in your region. And when you start stacking them up, your life can change. There's a lot said in our self-help culture about starting things. You have a business that you want to start? Yeah, you should absolutely go and start that. You have a project that you've been thinking about for a while? Go start. There's this whole idea that if you can just get yourself to start, you know, starting's the hardest thing. You've got to get into it, go for it, do it. Stop talking about it, start. The problem is, if people are bad at starting, they're even worse at finishing things. They take all of this enjoyment from starting, forgetting that there is untold enjoyment in finishing. The satisfaction of getting something done, of feeling like you have a completed project, of getting to the end of it and being able to put that stamp that says, I'm done, I finished, I don't need to look at this again, it's done. There is so much enjoyment that we can take from that that we do not get when we half-heartedly move from one project to the next. As soon as one gets difficult or lacks interest, we move on to the next one. Are you interested in achieving these goals or are you committed? If you're interested, you'll do what's convenient. You'll come up with stories and excuses and reasons why you can't. But if you're committed, you will do whatever it takes. You'll let go of your stories. You'll let go of your excuses. You'll let go of all the reasons you currently have that are formulating your identity of yourself. And you'll learn how to let that go and become who you are destined to become. You trying to get to the next level and you just interested. You kidding yourself. Forget about it. If you want to get to the next level, if you want to eat it, if you want to live it, if you want to be it, if you want to do it, 
stop talking about it and give me full commitment. You can be the person who says, this is going to f***ing work no matter what happens, no matter how frustrated I get, no matter how angry I get, no matter what, I'm f***ing doing this. If you're committed, you'll start today to let go of your stories, your excuses, your reasons why you can't and why you won't. You'll upgrade your knowledge, you'll upgrade your skills, you'll come in every single day and figure out how you can achieve those goals. It's about executing regardless. Regardless of your emotions, these test days, they test your fortitude, your endurance, your discipline, your grit, your dedication, your determination, your mental toughness at the very moment when everything in you wants to do absolutely nothing. You got to get the job done. Stop having dialogue with your emotions. Stop negotiating with your feelings and start to act. That's where people separate themselves from the pack. That's where people earn the right to success. They earn the money. They earn the life. They earn the relationship. They earn the body in those little moments where they don't want to do what they need to do, but move forward regardless of how they feel. That's what champions know, champions understand, and champions f***ing thrive on. Everyone says, well, you should be harmless, virtuous. You shouldn't do anyone any harm. You should sheath your competitive instinct. You shouldn't try to win. You know, you, you don't want to be too aggressive. You don't want to be too assertive. If you want to take a back seat and all of that, it's like, no, wrong. You should be a monster, an absolute monster. And then you should learn how to control it. It's impossible to respect yourself until you grow those mental teeth. And when you grow those teeth, you realize that you're dangerous. You begin to demand success for yourself. You're no longer wishing or hoping things work out. You're gonna make it happen no matter what. So you start carrying yourself with a different level of confidence and conviction that says to the world, I will not stop. I am going to assess the situation. I am going to come up with a plan and I am going to execute. I'm going to go get it because I'm built for it. If you set out and you say you're going to do something, do yourself a favor and don't lie to yourself. That is the worst thing that an individual can ever do. The people in life that win play offense, not defense. Stop backing into everything. Stand up. Bow your back a little bit. Start to walk a little different. Start to be that best version of you. You can do it in your quiet way. You can do it the way you do it. But somehow they got to look at you and go, okay, I won't monkey with that one. I need you to put the type of effort forward that the world knows don't come for me. You have to develop a doggedness. You gotta have some toughness in you. And the only way to develop toughness is you gotta practice being tough. And you cannot practice being tough by quitting every time you get tired, by stopping every time you don't feel like it, by giving up every time it get challenged. That's what's wrong with people now. People don't make it because they always give up when it get hard. You know, it's so challenging now. You know, they was talking about me. I feel weak. I'm tired. Life don't give a damn about you being tight. You got to get about the business now. You want to be successful, you got to get at it. You got to stop all this soft shit and all that mess, man. You got to get at it. You got to tear their mouth off. When you go out there, I need you to have that dog. When you get out there, I need you to kill or be killed when you get out there. When you get out there, whatever you can get, go get it. Because they're going to get it before you get it. And they ain't going to give it to you. So you go out there and get what's yours. A true monster's mentality is when you're willing to forego rest, forego comfort, forego personal desires, forego whatever it takes to be better than you were yesterday. And every single time you feel like quitting, remember all those hours and days you sacrificed to get to where you are. It's going to take you getting a hold of this thing and not letting go. You're going to have to fight and fight and fight till you can't fight anymore. Whatever it takes, I will do whatever I have to do to get to the other side, to make it over, to press through this. Nothing will hold me back. Nothing will stop me. If there's something that you want and you're hungry for it, you've got to do whatever is necessary until. And when you give the best you can and that's not enough, you must do what is required. And don't give up on yourself. Don't throw the towel in so quickly. Many people give up on the one yard line. 
There will be things that will happen to you in life that will get you down. But you must always stand up inside yourself and know that you can handle this. You've got to stand up to it and say, I'm going to do this anyhow. And I'm not going to let you stop me. And you've got to be so relentless that you're always looking for a way to get over, always looking for a way that you can break through, always looking for a way that you can win, always looking for a way that you can strike a telling blow. If you tell that thing, I'm here just like you here, and I promise you, I ain't leaving without the degree. I will not leave without that goal. I will not leave without that dream. I will not leave this university. I will not leave this job. I will not leave this client. I will not leave this opportunity. Until I'm successful. And you can't go back to that same old mindset. You gotta focus on this new day, this new mindset, these new goals. You can do it because that monster inside of you won't give up. That monster inside of you won't give in. That monster inside of you won't throw in the towel. Failing doesn't mean you quit. It means you failed, but get back up and continue to push that bar higher and higher and higher. When you're constantly pushing and getting up earlier and getting up earlier and getting up earlier and fighting through pains and discomforts, you don't care about failure. You actually welcome it. That means you set the bar so high that it's like, oh, I failed. That's where I need to be. Now I got to figure it out. You have to be uncommon amongst uncommon in your world. It takes everything. And then when you think you've given everything, you've just begun. The biggest war you're ever going through is right between your own ears. It's in your mind. The mind is a very powerful thing. It has a tactical advantage over you all the time. It knows where you don't want to go. So it will guide you away from that. And that's why the mind will always win. Until you f***ing reprogram it. You gotta figure out a way to reprogram your mind to get outside the box. Whatever my mind said I don't want to do, I realize I must do that. The greats do things when they don't always want to. And that's the separation. Without discipline, they're nothing. And discipline is doing what you hate to do, but do it like you love it. Because really, the only person that you're fighting every day is yourself. It's not your boss. It's not this or that. Yeah, those are all obstacles. A lot of them, you cannot control those obstacles. But you can control yourself. We have to regain control of our mind. How you gain mental toughness, how you become the person you want to be, is constantly facing the things that you don't want to face. The only way anything gets accomplished, you got to work hard. I can't remember what the f*** in this paragraph to pass this test to get in the military. Read it again. Still not getting it. Read it again. But if you're not getting it, write it out. And guess what happened? I got it. I can't swim. I'm negative buoyant. Go back again. I can't swim. Go back again. Go back again. Go back again. I got it. I realize if I keep going back and going back and going back, your mind will say, okay, we're going to figure it out because he is not going to stop. To find real, permanent peace, you first must go through suffering. You must go to the dark side of who you are. Every day I demand more for myself than anybody else could possibly expect. I don't compete with other people, I compete with what I'm capable of. A person that's obsessed and wants to just get there, they don't do the what the temperature is. They no longer care, because they know no matter what's out there, no matter if it's snowing, if it's a damn tropical storm, if it's 20 below, they don't care, they're gonna run. It doesn't matter what the f**k's out there, what's in front of me, I'm just gonna go. And that's how you wanna get your mind. You have to train your brain by doing things that make you uncomfortable consistently. To build this mindset that when things get hard, we don't shy away, we don't quit, we attack. I'm seeing through all those walls. I'm getting to where I want to go. You have to literally visualize the connection between what you're doing on a day-by-day -day basis with what you're wanting. What do you want yourself to look like 10 years from now? What do you want your bank account to look like? What do you want to look like physically six months from now or a year from now? You have to connect the dots. You have to remind yourself that these little things that you do are going to lead to the big things. If you think that you've given everything, you really have if you think you're working hard, you're not working hard enough. You can always do more. You always have another gear, another level of performance. You can always push a little bit harder, get up a little earlier, work a little longer. Whatever it is you want more of, you have complete control over whether you get it or not. People don't have limits. We put limits on ourselves. The fruit of everything good in life 
begins with a challenge. Everything worthwhile is uphill. Your dreams are there. Your hopes are there. Most people, they don't lead their life. They accept their life. Here's the issue. Most people, they have uphill hopes, but they have downhill habits. And you can't go uphill with downhill habits. It's pretty easy to get the mindset that there's nothing you can do about it, that you're overwhelmed, that you can't change the world. Well, you know what you can change? You can change you. You can change your world. And if you change your world and you make yourself better and you make your part of the world better, the rest of the world will follow. Good intentions are overrated. I know so many people, well, I'm going to do that. Yes, I think that's a good idea. I think I'm going to do that. So good intentions are the most overrated phrase in the world. Nothing happens until you've got good actions. And it's not going to come to you, and it's not going to fall in your lap, and it's not going to be something that, oh my gosh, it just was so simple. It's always going to be difficult. Look, I'd love to sugarcoat this thing for you. I'd love to tell you, look, you can go out here and get rich, do a couple of things, they ain't happen. You got to get real doggish. You got to get downright funky if you want to make it. Most of you won't be successful because when you're studying and you get tired, you quit. Weakness haunts us all. The times we could have done more. They eat at your self-esteem. They rob you of your self-respect. They diminish your belief in your potential. The true art of a full life is to minimize those moments when your weak thoughts win the battle and maximize your ability to rise and grind. Most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it. You don't want it badder than you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. And I'm here to tell you today, if you're going to be successful, rise and grind. If you want it to happen, get your butt up and make it happen. And sometimes if you're going to be successful, it's not how smart you are. It's not how strong you are. It's how much you can outlast stuff. Success is not a comfortable procedure. It is a very uncomfortable thing to attempt. So you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable if you ever want to be successful. Start putting some pressure on. Put some pressure on yourself. Get out here and get about it. Don't cry to give up. Cry to keep going. Don't cry to quit. You already in pain. You already hurt. Get a reward from it. Some of y'all, you not getting close to the vision. You didn't say the vision and your mama said something about it, so you didn't backed off. You didn't say something about the vision and somebody tried to kill you and you didn't backed off. Are you hearing what I'm trying to tell you? I'm telling you that you gotta be possessed with the vision. You wanna make your dream come true, you gotta stay focused. Some people rather get even than get ahead. Stay focused on where you wanna go. I just kept on doing what I was supposed to do. So you've got to work on it. When other folk are having a good time, you've got to have the strength of character to concentrate, to read, to digest information, to be able at any moment to sacrifice what you are for what you will become. You have to give it everything you got. No more TV, no more parties, no more playing. What you need to be doing is studying. While they was golfing, I was studying. While they was shooting hoops, I was studying. While they was playing games and sitting up and eating and joking in the restaurant, I was studying. You have to put your everything, your everything, your mind, your energy, your effort, your discipline. Nothing is going to jump out the fire if you don't throw something in there. It's not going to happen. I got to commit my very being to this thing. I got to breathe it. I got to eat it. I got to sleep it. You got to begin with the end in mind. So whatever your dream or your goal is, you got to wake up every day to it. You got to go to bed with it. You got to read stuff. The music you listen to, everything you do, got to pour into that dream. You got to stay focused on your dream. Don't allow anyone to pull you off the game plan. When they're having fun, you grind. When they're chilling, you work your ass off. When they're getting lit, you put in more work. And when they're wishing for a better lifestyle, you'll be living it. When you want to do something great with your life, something that is beyond those visions other people around you see for themselves, they're going to try to tear you down. They'll tell you you can't do it. You don't have what it takes. You're just a dreamer. People that don't have any dreams for themselves, they tend to be dream killers. Their family and friends and loved ones, in most cases, they will be the first to try and talk you out of your dreams, your visions and ideas. They will say, who wants you when you put on all that weight? Who wants you when you're looking like this? and been through this and been through that. 
Nobody's interested in you. Nobody's checking for you. They'll laugh at you. They'll call you names because they have no dreams. They have no hunger for success. They don't have an appetite. They don't want it. But I want to remind you to continue to dream and dream big. When they fight against you and your dreams of the future, that hurts. They won't see it like you do, but they don't have to. Only you do. You're the only one who has to see it for yourself. I want to win so bad, my hunger and appetite for success is intimidating. It scares the shit out of people. And people around me say, slow down, stop. You're doing too much. Your appetite is too big. I can't help myself. I want to win. Don't let these opinions of other people pull you off course. How do you do that? You ignore and outwork each and every one of them. You see, while they watch you and talk shit about you, you put in more effort. You work diligently. You focus on taking things to the next level. They'll keep spreading rumors and you will keep working. They'll keep talking negatively and you will keep working. They'll keep focusing on everything and everyone else and you'll keep working. And when they finally take a look around at their lives and compare it to yours, they'll come to the realization that they have absolutely no valid reasons to criticize anymore. And they will be the ones to lose while you will be the one to succeed. I will not be outworked. You may be smarter, you may be faster, you may be better than me in nine different categories, but you will never work harder than me. I will make my dreams come true. I don't care what it takes, I'll pay whatever price is required. Only those that can see the invisible can do what seems to be impossible. You have to be relentless. You have to never let off the gas, never stop, never quit. Never allow anyone to talk you out of the dream, the vision, and ideas that God has sent you. You gotta grind and hustle. You're gonna even have the doubt, the spirit of doubt is gonna kick in. And you're gonna say, why did I move out here? Everybody laughed at me. Everybody was looking at me like, man, you crazy as a mom. You just gonna leave your city, the comfortability of your house, your family, your environment, all your friends, your loved one to go seek a dream and a seek something that you're passionate about absolutely don't expect people to understand you don't expect it to make sense to anybody why you've got to do this why you have got to go why you leave this is a good job i'm going they pay you well i'm going why i don't understand you don't have to i'm going for me because i've made a different kind of commitment with my life this is something i have got to do because it's very easy to become your environment. It's very easy to become duplicates of the mediocre and average people surrounding you. So wake up every day and decide that you love yourself enough to commit yourself to you. If you concern yourself with what everyone else is doing and how everyone else feels about the things you're pursuing, you'll never get anything done. So you gotta focus on yourself. You've gotta focus on your dream, on your vision, on what it is you want in your life. You're supposed to live your life, focus on your intentions and do your thing. All the people that are living on the top have all decided that I'm gonna commit myself to this career, this vision, this goal, training, education, no parties. They're gonna call you names. They're gonna say you're corny. They're gonna call you a square. They're gonna say that you're a weirdo because you don't f with nobody. Those are the characteristics of a champion. Those are the characteristics of someone that have said that I have decided that I'm going to create a shift in this universe. If you look at documentaries on Steve Jobs and Oprah and all of the above, they are weird because they've seen things that no one else seen for their career path. They are living beyond what is expected because they were obedient to the vision. When you get to the point where you do the work consistently, you invest in yourself consistently, you make sacrifices consistently when everybody else is slacking off, when everybody's partying, when everybody's making excuses you will dominate every single person you're up against and your limits become non-existent I don't know what that dream is that you have I don't care how far-fetched it might appear to be I don't care how disappointing it might have been as you've been working toward that dream but here's what I know that that dream that you're holding in your mind that it's possible 
In the process of working on your dreams, you are going to incur a lot of disappointment, a lot of failure, a lot of pain, a lot of setbacks, a lot of defeats. But in the process of doing that, you will discover some things about yourself that you don't know right now. Most people think they're disqualified from becoming mega successful. They think their past disqualifies them. Their mistakes, their seven. You don't know, man, I've had a divorce. You don't know I failed in this other business. You don't know in the last down real estate market, I lost it all. You don't know what I'm addicted to. You don't know my mistakes. You don't know my weaknesses. You don't know what I'm not good at. You don't know, I've always been average and ordinary. I've always been invisible. And so that disqualifies me from being successful. So what you do regularly is you disqualify yourself. And what I'm saying to you, what if the truth was that your greatest mistakes are the very things that do qualify you? What if that's the case? What you will realize is that you have greatness within you. What you'll realize is that you're more powerful than you can ever begin to imagine. What you will realize is that you are greater than your circumstances, that you don't have to go through life being a victim. If you can survive temporary pain, on the other side of temporary pain, you will meet another version of you. Which, by the way, all pain is temporary. The only thing permanent is our soul. Even our bodies are temporary. So all pain, no matter what it is, it is temporary. And if you can survive it, on the other side of it, you will meet personality traits, emotions, thoughts, people, circumstances, versions of you that you didn't know existed before. If you want to make your dream become reality, the people that are running at their dreams know that it's possible that you can live your dream. That it's necessary, that you're relentless, that you have a plan of action, that you are creative. That know if it's going to happen, it's up to them. And they're resolving within themselves, it's not over until I win. The people that are running after their dream know they're going to have hard times. They keep on running because they're saying within themselves, no matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. I'm up here not because I'm super impressive, because I'm not. Every time I wanted to quit this business, I didn't make a decision to not quit the rest of my life. I made a decision not to quit for one more day. One more day just don't quit. One more day hang on. What if the truth is that changing your life is one away? One decision, one meeting, one conversation, one extra phone call, one extra rep in the gym. You start stacking up those one mores. That's the separator. You are one decision away from changing your life. You're one new meeting, one new relationship, one new contact, one new action, one new decision away from shifting your life from where it is right now to a totally different place. There's something you've been hesitating on. There's a contact you need to make. There's a job you need to quit. I don't know what it is, but I know there's a decision that you need to make to take you to the next level because decisions shape our destiny when they're backed up by some massive ass action. But you can't take the action if you don't decide. I made up in my mind, I will not go through this pain and not get a reward for it. I will not quit. I will not surrender. I will outlast every trial and every tribulation that comes in my life. You meet a family that is wealthy. Somewhere back in their lineage, generationally, they weren't. And then something happens. The one shows up. In every family, there's the one. And that one changes that family forever. In my family, I'm the one. We don't think like we used to think. I'm the one. I'm the one who made the calls late at night. I'm the one who drove hours and hours for people to say no. I'm the one who dealt with the heat. I'm the one who typed all the emails. I'm the one who returned all the messages. I'm the one that dealt with all the stress and the strife and the cancellations and the back talking and the people who didn't keep their word to me and the difficult times. I'm the one who lost sleep at night. I'm the one who got up early. I'm the one who carried the emotional burden of winning just like you are. You're the one. It's you. You've got to take personal responsibility. You've got to make it your personal business to make it happen. And you've got to resolve within yourself that I can do this. I'm the one. I'm the one. I'm the one to make this happen. I'm the one to become successful in this business. It's possible. I can live my dream. It's necessary. I work on myself. It's me. I've got to make it happen. In a matter of one moment, one decision, one day, one account, one client, one meeting, your life can change in a moment. And if you don't know that, you will miss them when they show up. But what if you believe that and you live in anticipation of finding them? Now your reticular activating sees things it wasn't seeing before, hears things it wasn't 
been hearing before, feels things it didn't feel before, and it tries to prove you right. If you put your head down, if you get focused, if you stop worrying about what everybody thinks, if you start pursuing that person you are capable of, if you start competing with the efforts you make every single day, your life changes. There are some times in life where you fall down and you feel like you don't have the strength to get back up. You so, so, sort of put a mask on your face and pretend that everything's okay when it's not and you go home and lay in your bed when no one's looking at you when you don't have to impress anybody and you're yourself and fear comes in maybe you have doubt in your life maybe you don't know for sure what's going to be happening in the future and it scares you maybe you're worried about what people think of you what people say about you just that fear paralyzes you and i just want to ask you today do you think you have hope every time you hit a low place don't those voices come back up again every time things go wrong don't those voices come back you start saying to yourself, I'm a mess up, I'm a failure, I'd be better off not being here. We just keep feeding ourselves this toxic thinking. The biggest single obstacle standing in your way to success is not lack of education, it's not lack of background, it's not lack of money, it's lack of belief in yourself. The fundamental key to success is what you believe is true for yourself. Not what you want, not what you desire. It's what do you believe? You have never changed your belief and you will never completely be healed or whole until you change the voice inside of your own head. What I've learned is that I have to start talking to myself. I'm like, Rich, you're great. You can do this. Rich, you can handle this. Rich, this is not a big deal. You're amazing. Rich, this too shall pass. The predicament that you are in right now does not define your destiny. You ought to look at every negative situation in your house and say you're a liar. Every time something whispers in your ear and says you can't make it through this, you can't take this, you're gonna have a nervous breakdown, you're gonna lose your mind, you're gonna die like your mama did, you're gonna get sick like your daddy did. You gotta talk back to those voices and say, hey, you're lying on me, I'm better than this. Every voice that said you'll never be nothing, you gotta call it out, you're a liar. Sickness is a liar. Failure is a liar. Despair is a liar. Disease, you're a liar. Can't learn, you're a liar. Can't read, you're a liar. Can't make it, you're a liar. Can't take it. You ought to call out every liar. You need to abort every voice that says you can't do it, you can't have it, you can't be it, you'll never get up, you'll never survive. Abort that thing. Push it out. Life gonna whip your butt. Life is gonna bully you. Stop whining. Stop crying. Nobody cares. Be demanding. Let it hit you, but don't let it punk you. Now, if you're gonna hurt anyhow, get some yardage out of it. Get something from it. You're already in pain. Use it. Do something with it. Allow your pain to push you to greatness. I don't care if you've been beaten to the floor, if your legs are too tired to lift that weight. Break through that barrier and create new ones for you and for others to show off. Get back up and live life. Whoever stays down is a loser. And winners will fail and get up. Fail and get up. You always get up. That is a winner. It's a guy that's willing to get knocked down, finally tells it on fortune, stand back up, stand back up. The perseverance to see it through, the never say die attitude. But if I don't win, I showed up, I gave my valid effort. And tomorrow I'll do the same thing. And I'll continue to throw shit against the wall. Every time I get knocked down, I will get back up and I will succeed. I will not surrender. The moments that take your breath away are the ones that count. You need the downs to make the ups. You need the ups to create the downs. You need to feel the opposites to truly understand the full reality of the life you are living. You can dream of these things, but understand you can also achieve them. Other people have done it, then we can do it. We fail a lot of times. Well, a lot of other folks fail, and eventually they came back and they succeeded. So it's possible we can have what we want, and it's necessary. We get negative, do-nothing people out of our lives. It's necessary. We never stop learning and growing and developing ourselves. Else, it's necessary that we never give up. Whatever we have to do, it's worth it. The bigger your dream is, the harder to grind. You might have small beginnings. You might not have a lot of money. You might not have a lot of resources, but there's no excuse. And I need you to understand that the bigger your dream is, the earlier you're gonna have to get up. 
longer you're gonna have to stay up, the more effort you're gonna have to put in. You know how hard I work to get here? I put in too many hours. I sweat too much blood, too much tears. I worked hard to get here. Didn't nobody give me this. I didn't grow up with wealth. Didn't nobody pay me. I worked for this. Sweat, blood, tears. I earn every dime I get. I work for this. You will not outwork me because your height has nothing to do with my work ethic. Your face has nothing to do with my work ethic. You will not outwork me. You got to kill. What's going to separate you from everybody else? I do things to separate myself from everybody else. The passion that I have, the grind that I have when I do what I do. I got a different motor. I got a different grind. I'm always going to give you my 110%. That's the only thing I can ever say a solid day's work. If you guys do not do that, I promise you, your life will haunt you for the rest of your days. From today on, you play whatever your best game is, you play that level every single time. It doesn't mean you're going to score every time, but you can always give 120% effort. You can't dictate what kind of game you're going to have. You can't dictate how your body is going to respond to moving around, but you can dictate your effort. Your dream come on you push. And I'm not about to give you no cookies and ice cream. Push. It's alive. It's inside. How do you know you feel it? You dream about it. You eat and sleep it every day. So push. Just push past the play. Push. Don't quit. Push. And you push your way to success. You have a chance to control your destiny. All of us are created equal. Some of us just work harder. Some of us just grind. Some of us don't make excuses. Some of us don't give up and give in. What we do with the pressure is we say, I got to take it, and I got to take it to another level. Many of you have lost your competitive edge. Get your competitive edge back. Act like you playing basketball. Act like you playing football. Go on that dog on classroom. Compete. You not giving 120. You giving 70. You giving 60. You giving 50. And you won't with these people who've given sweat, who's given blood, who's given tears. You won't what they pay for, and it ain't free. You might be bigger than me, you might be faster than me, you might be stronger than me, but you will not outwork me. You get a breakthrough when you fight. That's the hardest part because the breakthrough, that last 10% is all mental toughness. It's time to unwrap the potential you can be. It's within you. And the people that have risen to that level were no different than any one of us. It's just they believed it and they're willing to work their fucking ass off to get it. It wasn't about the potential. It wasn't about the genetics. It was about the perseverance. And it was about being the hardest fucking worker in the room. The storm is going to come. I don't care who you are. No one is exempt. It's called life, ladies and gentlemen. So how do you handle it when you're in the storm? You must have faith. You must have the faith to call forth those things that be not as though they were the strength and the courage to make it through, the enduring power, the ability to persevere, to handle it, it will pad you, the inner power to overcome, to come back again. So in order to begin to prepare for the storm, you've got to go within and start working on yourself. You've got to get grounded. You've got to train your mind to serve you. Meditation is one of the ways in which you can do that. Reading is one of the ways that you can do that. Listening to music is one of the ways that you can do that. Exercise is one of the ways in which you can do that. Things that you can do to still your mind, to clear your thoughts so you can think. I had a program for myself. I have books that I read that inspire me, tapes that I listen to that fire me up. Because you're going to have sometimes low moments when you won't want to get out of bed. You just want to stay there. There are times you won't want to come out the house. There are times you'll be feeling bad and don't know why what's wrong. I don't know. Just leave me alone. The first tendency is to panic. When they said, your mother has breast cancer. I panic immediately. I start grieving and crying. I tell the girls, oh God, I can't handle this. I never thought this day would come. I can't deal with this pain. You got to talk to yourself sometimes. You hear me? You got to talk to yourself. And yes, I was scared. Leslie, get up. Get up, Leslie, get up. Come on, man. It's easy to have faith when mama's got her health and all is well. Come on, get up and come in the house. She needs us now. Come on, be a man. Come on in this room and face it. Be still. Know that all is well. To pull this through. And I made up my mind. I don't care what it takes. I don't care how many speeches I have to give, how many seminars I have to give. I know I ain't got the money. I know I don't have the education. But I ain't going to let that stop me. I'm going to do it. And yes, it's going to be hard, it's going to be difficult, and you get more no's than you do yes. But when you hold out, 
things will begin to happen you won't even understand how see what the storm does ladies and gentlemen it empowers you it strengthens you when you go through a storm when you come through that kind of experience and able to reclaim your life you come back with a certain kind of power and you'll never be the same again after that experience there's certain things when you go through those things and you come up out of those things you come up a different kind of person different spirit different power different energy that builds character don't ever say when you're going through some rough time i'm going through a really bad tragic time no See, I'm going through a character-building experience. Tough times never last, but tough people do. You should take pride in wanting to quit and not quitting. Hey, it's really hard right now, dude. You're really struggling right now. But here's the thing. Right now is when everybody else quits. Right now is when everybody else is going to fall behind. Right now is when everybody else decides to do something that's easier or faster or not as hard. And that's what gets you ahead. That's what gets you to have pride. Because those struggles, those feelings, those things that are difficult, they are there to test you. This pain, this conflict, this tragedy, this tribulation is the test. Don't fail it. Stay strong. Don't ever quit. Struggle is a privilege. Hardship is a privilege because those struggles, those hardships, those things that you face will turn you into an unstoppable motherfucking machine. So if you want to create super high confidence, super high self-esteem, super high momentum, that feeling I'm super powerful, I'm invincible, I'm the fucking man or I'm the fucking woman, you have to take pride in not quitting when other people are going to quit. You have to take pride in executing your job to the very best of your ability when everything around you is going wrong. That's what gets you out of the storm. You can't just focus on this moment. You've got to hold the vision. Hold the vision of things improving. Hold the vision of your health coming back. Hold the vision of being financially independent and debt free. Hold the vision of your relationships working out. Hold the vision of everything being all right because it'll give you power, give you strength, give you faith, give you patience, give you perseverance. It'll give you the ability to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. And when you discipline your emotions and you don't allow them to control you, when you tell yourself, I'm in charge here, I set the course for my life, these storms that I face, they do not have power over me. When you declare that to yourself, the limits for you become non-existent. Think for how many years, months, hours, seconds you have wasted. We sleep one third of our fucking lives and we think we can take fucking days off. We think we have the right to sit back and give ourselves fucking options on which way we're going to go in life. Am I going to run today? Am I going to work out today? Well, it's Christmas. It's New Year's. Do you think time gives a fuck that it's Christmas? That is New Year's, you give yourself too many fucking options. Time is running out. You keep on sitting around wondering what the fuck you want to do. You're just gonna run out of time. Stop following the fucking crowd. They may take time off, but you can't afford to. Short term thinking says the donut tastes good, eat it. Short term thinking says one workout doesn't matter. I can skip it. Short term thinking encourages you to make short-term emotional decisions that hurt you in the long run and they definitely don't move you toward your overall strategic goals the more short-term decisions you make decisions that are based on that immediate gratification decisions based on quick emotional satisfaction the further from the path you will stray don't do that think strategic think long term you need tactical wins you need to win battles in order to win the war you need to get out of bed you need to run you need to work out you need to read and study and practice and you need to do things that you don't necessarily want to do if you do the work consistently if you invest in yourself consistently one plus one is always going to equal two Two plus two is gonna equal four. In 10 years of motherfucking work, when everybody else is partying, making excuses, doing the cool thing on the weekend, it's gonna pay off.
What's your standard? I don't care what it is, but what is your standard? I got some standards. I've been waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning since I was 19 years old. That's a non-negotiable. Every morning at 3, I'm up. That's my standard. I'm telling you, set a standard. You can't be no champion if you don't have a standard. The men who set a standard are always the ones who are champions. As a champion, we ain't trying to cut corners. We ain't trying to see how much we can do and still be successful. I got a standard. I want to be the best. Finish. Effort is not good enough. Ain't nobody paying you for effort. You don't get paid for effort. You don't get paid for trying. Execute. Set the standard. Then raise the standard. Then uphold the standard every single day. You going up against other champions? You think you gonna get fifty percent? You think you gonna get seventy percent? You think you gonna get eighty percent? Y'all good. You're real good at what you do. But some of you don't finish. The real beast. The real beast is when they legs give out. The real beast when they tired. The real beast find a way to pull something out when nobody else ain't got nothing. Success is never on discount. Success is never on sale. You never see Rolls Royce say, please, come by us. Why? Because a Rolls Royce, when they make it, they make it one at a time. And they take their time and they handcraft it. It never goes on sale. And some of y'all in this room, you want your dream to go on sale. It's never going to go on sale. But if you want to be average, they give an average out. They got discounts on goods. But if you want to be great, you got to pay blood, sweat, tears, and you got to pay every single there are no shortcuts to greatness. To be great, there are no days off. All of us, at some time or another, have agonized over making a decision. Some decisions are major decisions. And also there are a lot of small decisions that we don't make. That they tax our minds, they drain our energy. They create a lot of anxiety and nervousness and mental torment. Because we don't take care of it. We decide not to decide, which is a decision. Imagine you're on your deathbed, and standing around your deathbed are the ghosts representing your unfulfilled potential. The ghost of the ideas you never acted on. The ghost of the talents you didn't use. And they're standing around your bed, angry, disappointed, and upset. They say, we came to you because you could have brought us to life, they say. And now we have to go to the grave together. So I ask you today, how many ghosts are going to be around your bed when your time comes? How much time do you spend working on you? How much time do you spend every day working on your dream? What kind of investment have you made in you? If your mentality is, I can't wait to see what happens great to me in 2022. You are going to get fucking sh** as a result. Life does not reward people who wait to see what happens. What you put in, you will get out. So if you want 2022 to actually be different, you have to not only be willing to visualize and manifest, you have to be willing to grit it out. You have to be willing to push through discomfort. Nothing that you're about to try or do or achieve that is worthwhile is going to be comfortable for you during the process of creating it. And I want you to take the word hope and I want you to throw it on the motherfucking ground and I want you to replace it with the word I will fucking do in 2022. Woe be unto you if you go into another year and waste another year with the old mentality while somebody's in the hospital begging God for the opportunity that you have right now. You better step into this moment. You're only here for a short time. If you're not going to show people what's possible, who the fuck else is? Who's going to show your kids? Who's going to show your aunts and uncles? Who's going to show your fucking nieces and nephews? Are you going to fail those people? Are you going to buy into the narrative that you can't? Stand up for your dreams. Stand up for what you want in your life. Decide that your life is so meaningful to you, that you love you and you love life so much that you're going to stand up for something you want. You don't want to be a spectator. You want to get out in the field where the action is and you will be amazed. After the struggle, there will be a calm period and things will begin to click for you. Come out here with what you got. You don't have enough money? Don't worry about it. You got the dream. You must be patient, persistent, and positive no matter what. But aren't there some guarantees you can give us? Yes, you're going to die. You can't get out of life alive. 
So I'm saying to you, you got six months to live. Live your life now. Live your dreams now. Start acting like this is your last day on the planet. You don't have to be anything you don't want to be. As long as you decide to change your mind. You got to get to the point in your life where you say, I have had it. I've had it with going in a restaurant, looking on one side to see what I want to eat, and then look on the other side to see what I could afford. I'd had it living like that. I'd had it borrowing money from people. I'd had it living like a cringing animal. When you don't have any money, it runs your blood pressure up. You hear me? And you've got to decide, I have had it. I'm not going to live like this anymore. Let me tell you something. You deserve it. You deserve a better life. There is more to your life than you've been living. You deserve it. When you commit yourself to do better, that's the moment you start to see real change. You better be committed or you ain't gonna make it. You have to be committed through the storm and the rain and the heartache and the pain and the disappointment. It's a commitment, it's not a feeling. Commitments don't have nothing to do with your feelings. You do it because you're supposed to. Your feelings will never cooperate with your dreams. Beat your feelings into captivity because when you beat your feelings into captivity, that is what discipline is. The very first level is you seeing it. You gotta know what it looks like, tastes like, feel like, because you don't, you're gonna compromise. Find those goals that mean something to you. Write them out, read them every day. Develop a plan of action. Make up your mind that you have the power within yourself to reinvent you. You've got to work on it. When other folk are having a good time, you've got to have the strength of character to concentrate, to read, to digest information. If you want it bad enough, nothing's going to stop you. Not fear, not somebody's opinion, not how hard your childhood was, not self-doubt, nothing will stop you. You can do what you put your mind to. And if you continue to put your mind to it, the game opens up new levels. And each new level that gets opened up, you're able to adapt a different mindset and a different approach. You can stop at that level or you can go, I want more levels. I want more fucking levels. You can make every dream you've ever had a reality, but you've got to be willing to stand and fight for it. You've got to be willing to give up your time for it. Give up your peace. Give up your blood. Give up your sweat. Give up your tears. Give every single thing you possibly can to that dream. And you think greatness goes on sale, but true quality never goes on sale. The only thing that goes on sale is cheap stuff. The real high quality stuff, it costs what it costs. They're not trying to get somebody average to buy it. You got to have a certain amount of money or you ought not to be in here. Greatness costs what it costs. There is a price tag to greatness. Nobody's gonna hand it to you. You've gotta grind for it. You've gotta stick with that thing for as long as it takes and pay whatever price is required. And while you're suffering from self-doubt, other people are intimidated by your full potential. If your past self could see where you're at today, think of how impressed they would be. One of the greatest ways you can overcome self-doubt is to realize how far you've come. Maybe you're not exactly where you want to be, but you're a lot better than where you were. And the key is to wake up every single day, put one foot in front of the other, keep moving and keep growing. You got to have some strong reasons for why you're doing this because when you get out into the arena of life, you're going to get your ass kicked and your reasons will be the only thing that will keep you going. When the dream is worth it to you, you'll go through hell to get it. Who cares how long it takes? What matters is that if it's something that gives your life value, you'll do whatever's required. When you feel that it's worth it, you don't need any guarantees if things will work out. You don't need to know the outcome because you know that you'll either find a way or make a way. When it's worth it, you exert greater effort and greater effort releases the creative genius in you. When you go up in there and you start going at it passionately and working with it and working with it and working with it, it will reveal its secrets to you and you'll discover things about yourself that you don't know right now. 
And most people will not be successful. They will not reach whatever they wrote because when there's not anything emotionally attached to it, they're going to quit and give up. Most people were closer than they ever thought they were to finishing that big thing, but they never finished it because they didn't feel like finishing it. Or they were doing it and it was pain. And most people quit in the pain because the pain hurts so bad that they don't know if they want to keep going to get to go. Because you're going to wake up most days and not feel like it. You're going to wake up most days and not be pumped up. You're going to wake up most days and not feel like doing it. But when you can get to a point that you do it anyway, then there's no way you won't reach any of your goals. You are not where you want to be, not because you need any more gifts. You don't need nothing else. You need to discipline yourself. You need to learn to tell you no. You keep talking about everybody else you can't tell no. You can't tell you no. You can't tell you stop. You can't tell you quit. You got to get to a point where you're disciplined. It's a muscle. The mind is a muscle. Emotion is a muscle. I don't negotiate with myself. Well, maybe I'll do it tomorrow. I'm going to do this. Or oh, let me wait two more minutes till I'm ready. There's none of that with me. For decades, I go, I say, we do. I'm not here to discuss this shit with my mind. There's mind, and then there's soul and spirit. And soul and spirit, my soul fucking knows. And when I say jump, you fucking jump. I'm not here to have a discussion with you. But you have to take control and train this brain. If you don't train this brain, it'll use you instead of you using it. Everyone wants some life hack that eliminates the need to do the work, but that does not exist. You have to do the work. You've got to hold the line. You've got to make it happen. What could you be if you worked as hard as you could? What could you be if you imposed real discipline in your life? I said you crank up the volume on that question. Max it out. And then go get some. People who win can do sh and people who lose talk sh you can win if you choose to learn the things that you need to do and then can do them. That's reality. That's the sh nobody wants to admit because admitting so means that you have to take responsibility for where you are currently. And you have to say, I am where I am currently because I didn't do X, Y, and Z. And guess what? That f hurts a little bit. But once you accept that truth, you are able to then move forward with the actions required to get you to where you want to go. You have no business being average, but now you justify it. You come up with these great reasons why you can't get up at five. You have these great reasons of why you have to do everything, why you don't execute, why you don't finish, why you don't follow through, why you say you don't exercise and you do it for about 10 days and you quit. You've got an excuse for why you're average. I guarantee you, if you were humble enough, if you were hungry enough, if you really wanted what you said, you'd sit down and you'd study what you do and you'd say, I can do this better. But I have not exhausted all my time. I have not exhausted all my resources. There's something missing. You're not where you're supposed to be. It's not going to take a lot, but it's a small gap. And the gap is called execution. If you want to execute just a little bit more, you'll be on a whole other level. You have to master the monotonous. It's the boring sh It's the everyday sh It's the regular sh It means doing the sh that most people are too fucking undisciplined to do day in and day out with perfection. Doing it better than everybody else. Doing it to the best of your ability. You have to remind yourself that these little things that you do are going to lead to the big things. Are you going to do your workout or are you not? Are you going to do your cardio or are you not? You think things are gonna just go your way? Well, they're not gonna just go your way. You gotta make them go your way. You think things are gonna just happen for you? Well, they're not just gonna happen for you. You gotta make them happen. Discipline your body. Free your mind. Get up early and go. Get after it and you will become the person you want to be. And you become that person through one small decision at a time. There is no excuse for not being the hardest worker. Yeah, someone might be bigger, stronger, faster, or quicker, younger, whatever else, but there is no excuse to not be the hardest fucking worker there. It is the process of the grind that shapes you and forms you. It's not the game. And that's why most of y'all get beat in the game or make mistakes in the game because you think grinding is what happens when the sun comes out. You think grinding is what happens when the lights come on. You think grinding is what happens when people get in the stage. That's not grind. The real grind is in the dark when nobody sees you. When nobody knows what you're doing. When you're studying without coach. When you're putting in those extra reps. When you're watching those videos and you're getting inspired, when you change your music, it's the process that makes you sweet. 
It has everything to do with what time you wake up. It has everything to do with how you eat. It has everything to do with how you work out, how you prepare. It has every single thing to do with how you think. And if you're gonna be the best, the cream of the crop, you gotta be it, not talk about it. It has to consume you. It has to take over you, that when I see you without even knowing you, I ought to be able to look at you and from your ethos, I ought to see you are the best of the best. I ought to know what you're doing without you saying one word, it ought to illuminate from you. If we looked at your background, you should have had a nervous breakdown and lost your mind. You should have given up by this point. You should have thrown in the towel on yourself already. You should have walked away by now. But there's something in your gut in your heart, in your spirit, in your innermost being. That said, hold on. That instinct, that still, small voice is about to turn your life around. Regardless of the situation and circumstances, all the bad things happening around you, and what challenges you face now, you've got to believe in your heart of hearts that you can do it. It's gonna be a dog fight. And if you're soft, you want to get out now. This is where you're like, I quit. Whatever you want, you got to be willing to accept whatever come with it. Like adversity is adversity, opposition is opposition. But it's not so much about the opposition and the adversity that we face as it is about the perspective that we have about the opposition and the adversity that we face. When you want something, don't expect everybody to say, oh, come on in, oh, you want this? Oh, great, we want to give this to you. You're such a nice person. You're doing it for your family, aren't you? Great. No, no, life isn't like that. No, many doors will be closed in your face. Many loans that you will want. And they'll say, no, you don't have enough collateral. You don't have enough credit. And most people will give up. But you've got to decide that I'm going to be fearless and I'm going to go all out. I'm going to be relentless. I don't care how many no's I encounter. I refuse to be denied. I challenge you to fight, to work, to not stop here, to believe so heavily in your aspirations that you too will not fear the word no, but instead you will choose to welcome it. And when you want it as bad as you want to breathe says, I'm willing to make any sacrifice, I'm willing to go through any pain, I'm willing to go through any suffering, I'm willing to go through whatever it takes. So when I get in there, I guarantee you at the end of it, I won't be the one that surrender. So as we look at the future, we can decide that from this day forward, as I look at all the dimensions of my life, looking at myself mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, I'm going to do all I can do to develop me, to bring my talent out here, to make a contribution to life. But is it easy? No. Is it worth it? Yeah. Yes, your life is worth it. Our biggest challenge is to look at our own lives and ask the question, how am I holding myself back? Am I being as creative as I need to be? Am I using every resource I have? Am I turning up every rock to find what I'm looking for? Am I being unstoppable? Am I being relentless? The only thing that holds you back is the thing between your two ears, your own mind. If you can increase your self-belief and see yourself doing better, you will. And the process is not supposed to be comfortable. So if it hurts, welcome to the big leagues. If you feel like you're under heat, praise God. If you feel like you're being pressured, praise God. But when God looks like he's pulling you back, eventually he gonna let you go. And the farther he pulls you back, the farther he pulls you back, once he releases you, boom. So when life happens, I don't just sit there and cry. I buck back, I buck back. We've come too far. We've been through too much. We've seen too much. We've had too many victories. We have seen defeat. We've looked defeat in the face and we've overcome it. We've come too far to give up now. We've come too far to be negative now. We've come too far to start overthinking now. Put yourself in a position where you can't retreat, where it's do or die, sink or swim. Here's what you'll find out. You'll develop incredible swimming skills. You'll find yourself stroking unlike you've ever seen before. Through the inspiration of desperation, you'll become more creative than ever before. Throw your whole self into it. See, most people go at it tentatively. They don't give all their stuff. They don't concentrate. You can't make a basket unless you shoot the ball. You can't hit a home run unless you take a swing at it. Most people won't even take a swing. If you want something, you've got to be relentless. You've got to decide, I deserve this and I'm going to have it. And you go all out.
to get it. The spirit of resiliency, the spirit of grit, it's in your DNA, it's in your blood. Overcoming is in your blood. Getting through adversity is in your blood. We need to focus on where we're going, not where we come from and what's happening. You gotta tell life, I don't know who you've been dealing with, but you ain't dealt with me. You gotta tell bankruptcy. You gotta tell divorce. You gotta tell sickness. I don't know who you've been dealing with, but you come up against the wrong one this time. You can be and do whatever you want, and nobody can stop you. Nobody can stop you but you.